All right, shalom, shalom, Israel, most high in Christ, bless. Hey, I appreciate that. Uh, I think that was Sister Salah. Because I sure thought I was broadcasting from uh, uh, from the classroom page. And then I looked up. I don't even remember opening my personal page to broadcast from it. But I appreciate you for looking out, sis. Uh, hey, y'all, let's go and send up the prayers. Y'all know y'all the reason why I've been starting early. So, hey, let's send up the prayers. All right, there we go. So it won't be repeating back. All right, uh, look, uh, brothers, make sure your head uncovered. Sisters, make sure your head uh, covered. Listen up to prayers. Right. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <sighs> All right, y'all. Uh, I spelled the title of the class right. Uh, today's title of the class is going to be uh, Watch the Company You Keep. Watch the company we will keep. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to open up with Ecclesiastes 13. But before that, I want to read our disclaimer. Uh, we are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. That in Christ is a non-violent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or agenda, we advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, we must contact the property, proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threats, as stated in Leviticus 5 and 1, King James Version. All right, where we at? So, um, that's our disclaimer, y'all. Hey, look, we got to read that every class, you know. So they, hey, the dragon is wroth with the woman. So, you know, we got to read that every single class. Uh, I think this will be an important class today. Watch the company you keep. And the reason why, like this stuff that took, took you know, stuff that happened uh, this last past year ago, uh, you know what I'm saying? Being a part of leadership or being, you know, a member in leadership, it made me start observing a lot of things, observing the brothers that I'm around, you know what I'm saying? Just observing the company I keep, period. Now, look, I love the brothers and sisters in the body, don't get me wrong. Right? And um, let's prove it. Is it still echoing? It shouldn't be echoing no more. Let me know if it's still echoing before I go on. Because I know the reason why I was echoing at first is because I had two pages open. And I can close the other page. All right, y'all, it's a, um, I think it's a lag, so it shouldn't be echoing no more. Okay, y'all. So I, that, I guess it ain't no echo no more because on the few of y'all put that up there. I remember when it was doubling up and uh, it was doubling up because um, I had opened another page 
Now I know that um, when I open up the other page, I seen that uh, Facebook uh, the live recording is set back probably like a minute or so. So a lot of times when I speak, y'all ain't get it right exactly when I speak. But anyway, to get back into topic, because one of the sisters, uh, I'll be yeah, all praises, so it's appreciated. She said it's not echoing anymore. So um, let me see, let me see. Uh, we're going to open up with Ecclesiasticus chapter 13. Matter of fact, I had actually lost uh, lost my thought with that uh, because I was finna go somewhere else. But what I was saying, y'all, this stuff that took place back here last past year with all the ex-members and things like that, you know what I'm saying? That made me sit back and look at the company that I was keeping. And oh, yeah, I know what I was bringing out. Let's go to First Timothy 1 and 9. Remember, y'all, all Israel ain't right. And then after looking at uh that Malcolm X, who shot Malcolm X uh video, that made me start to zero the company I keep a little more as well. And 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 look, I'm gonna tell you, especially for um uh, you young brothers um uh, that's in the truth and you new sisters that, that's in the truth, y'all really need to watch the brothers and sisters that you around. And the reason why, because it can be real effective. Uh, I mean, the, people can do things around you that can cause a breach to the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Meaning you won't be properly built up if you're around the wrong brothers and sisters when you first come into this truth. All Israel ain't right. Listen to this. This first Timothy chapter one, verse nine. It say, knowing this. That the that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. So, the laws ain't just made for those who keep the commandments. If you look, if you keep the commandments, and you are already right, and you already been wearing fringes, and you grew up in this truth, the law wasn't made for you. If you grew up knowing that you was the Israelite and keeping God commandments, hey, the law ain't made for you. <laughs> Let's read on. Uh, it say, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. So I think a lot of y'all ain't understanding that um, what type of people we got coming in this truth. We got lawless people. We got disobedient people. We got ungodly people. We got straight up sinners that's coming into this truth. Unholy, profane. Some people profane as hell. You can tell in their speech. Murderers of fathers and murders of mothers. Manslayers. It's say for whoremongers. For them that defiled themselves for mankind. Now when you talk about them that defiled themselves for mankind, let's talk about homosexuals. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about homo. Sexuals, you know what I'm saying? Pie sexuals. This talking about your whole LGBT movement right there. It say for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other th uh, thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. So you got to be careful because what Paul is showing us, he describing the type of people that's going to come into this truth. And when a lot of people come in, they ain't right. And a lot of y'all, you align yourselves with some of these brothers and some of these sisters that come to this, this truth and they have these certain type of attributes. Instead of aligning yourselves with the leadership, let's get this real quick. Let's go to Ecclesiastical 6. That's why some of you brothers never reach your full potential. And, and I'm mainly going to deal with brothers today. You know what I'm saying? But hey, this for you sisters too. But that's why some of you brothers and you sisters, you never reach your full potential because you align yourself with the wrong people. You don't align yourself with the leadership. You know what I'm saying? I remember back here, I say about four or five years ago in Miami, we had this group that we used to call Burger and Fringes. All they did was rap, barbecue, and eat. And when one left, all of them brothers left. That's all they did, rap, barbecue, and eat. Where them brothers at now? 
You don't even see them brothers no more. They ain't keeping the commandments. I don't know what the hell them brothers doing, but I know they ain't teaching on the street. I ain't going to say they ain't keeping the command. I don't know what they doing. I'm just going to tell you the truth. But they ain't out here teaching on the streets. I know that for sure. They ain't doing a damn thing. But what happened? They aligned themselves with the wrong group of people. You know what I'm saying? And look at all of them. One of them left, all of them leave. Now look, let's get this. Ecclesiastical chapter 6, verse 32. It say, my son, if thou wilt, thou shall be taught. And, I, and if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shall be prudent. So if you want to become wise, you, I mean, if you want to become wise, you can become wise. But you got to be willing to become wise. It say, if thou love to hear, thou shall receive understanding. Ask yourself, is you a listener or is you a speaker? Do you go around people? Is you the one who always doing the talking? Is you around leadership and all you doing is uh, uh, yapping off at the mouth? Or is you the type that's going around trying to listen and, and see if parables or understanding going to come out? A lot of times, I'm going to tell you, brother, some, especially with me, if you come around and you like to do a lot of yipping and yapping, you don't even expect me. To, to bring out no scriptures. I'm telling you not. Don't even expect me to bring out some scriptures. I'm going to let you yip and yap. Because a lot of times when you sit, sit up there and you let somebody talk and run off at the mouth, they'll sit up there and reveal themselves. You know what I'm saying? I've been, I've been you know, I've been examining things. I, I had uh, one brother, he come over here the other day, and all he asked me, hey, go over this. Explain this to me. Uh, show me that, you know what I'm saying? Then you have some other brothers, they'll come around you, all they do is yip and yap. Watch who you align yourself with, I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm telling y'all this based on coming from a leader's point of view. You know what I'm saying? Because some of y'all, you at that point where you ain't examining, properly examining brothers and sisters, that, yeah, you just glad that you, you knew in the truth, you just glad that hey, you got like-minded believers around you. Yeah, y'all like-minded, meaning, okay, they be, they say they believe this. And they follow, they say they following what you following. That's what's make you like-minded. But just because they say they believe this and say they following what you following, that don't mean that these brothers and sisters really in this truth or really love the Lord. Remember, Paul gave us attributes of the type of people that's coming into this truth. Some people are liars. They'll lie. They'll fake it. And you had a group of people fake it for years and then left. And they went here but for number money. Now look, what we at? They say, if thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. And what I see with a lot of you younger men when y'all come in, you don't stand in the multitude of the elders. You know what I'm saying? You cleave to the newer brothers that came in with you. And that's why y'all, you know, I used to wonder, I'm like, hold on, man. Brothers ain't being built like how I was built. Or when I look at how brothers come in, looking at the way could brothers coming in now, like me, when I first came in, one of the things I used to always do, I used to travel a lot. I still travel a lot, so, <laughs> you know, but I traveled a lot. And I always went to visit. I'm going to tell you one of the main person I went to visit was Deacon Avier. You know what I'm saying? I was down there in Oklahoma every other week being around Deacon, listening to uh, Deacon bring out classes. I had to be around somebody who I can hear that's going to go over scriptures that, you know what I'm saying, ain't going to be all jokey-jokey with a brother, even though y'all see us joking and stuff now on Facebook, but back then it wasn't like that. You know, Deacon had to prove me, you know what I'm saying, to see what amount of man I was. But I was sitting up there, I always was traveling, going to be built up by Deacon, listen to Deacon bring out the scriptures. I remember when the first time he brought out, I think that was Matthew 27 and 26, I was like, dang, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it was a bunch of stuff that Deacon used to bring out. And I was like, damn, you know what I'm saying? It, it was an honor, you know, to, to sit in this man's house and to hear him bring it out or, you know what I'm saying? Then they ended up getting a school. So I actually got a chance to 
come up in his house and hear him bring out the lessons. And that was a blessing to even be invited in there. But uh, I aligned myself around men to understand it. Then every feast day when we were traveling, like um, certain rooms where the leadership would be in, I always ended up in them jets. I always ended up in them jets. And I used to sit in there and I used to be quiet and just listen. And I remember uh, I had already been to New York. I had been to New York probably like two times already, one or two times. But I think the third time I went, I was invited to the bishop house. Went over there, bishop, deacons in the house, going through the scriptures, going through the laws. They're bringing out deep stuff. I still ain't brought it out to this day. And I just shut the hell up. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all, I'm telling you, you don't align yourself, you know what I'm saying, with the proper people to be built up. Watch the company you keep. Now, look, let's go right back to where we was at. Uh, this Ecclesiastical 6 and verse 34 says, Stand in the multitude of the elders, elders and cleave unto him that is wise. A lot of times, y'all think a brother's supposed to be cleaving to you. For real. You got brothers, they'll call the leader of the camp. Oh, why you don't call me? Or why you don't come by my house? Well, right here, it say you need to be trying to call him. You need to be trying to cleave unto the, the elder. You need to be trying to cleave to the brothers who came in before you. What the hell he trying to cleave to you for? What you going to teach him? <laughs> if he got the understanding, why in the hell is he cleaving to you? You know, let's read on verse 35. Be willing to hear every godly discourse and let not the parables of understanding escape thee. And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee be tied to him and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Let thy mind be upon the ordinance of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thy heart and give thee wisdom at thy own deceit. So that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be cleaving to the elders. You're supposed to be cleaving to the wise men. That's the company that you're really supposed to be trying to get in the presence of. I know a lot of y'all are like, well, y'all got... Uh, Y'all got um, uh, y'all got all these study circles now, and we got officers assigned to us and things like that, you know. And and I'm gonna tell y'all this too, even with officers being assigned to some of you brothers, and y'all brothers won't even cleave to your damn officer. He been in the truth before you. He know more than you, but you won't even cleave to him. You always want to cleave. You always cleave to the brothers that's newer. Come, let's just say I'm looking at soldiers around number new brothers they ain't around officers they ain't trying to be built up by officers and then if they're around officers they're around the wrong damn officer they're around the wrong officer they're around this officer that's toxic and got all types of bad habits and think he don't give a damn about nothing and then you wonder why you ain't properly built up you know now look let's go from there to ecclesiastical 13. You around the officer that's always getting corrected. He always getting blasted for something. That should let you know, like, you know what? Hey, I might want to align myself with somebody different. But, but, but because some of y'all, you, you love fun and games, and you always want something to do, and you always bored, and you always want to eat, and you always want to listen to music, you ain't properly being built up in this truth. You know what I'm saying? And I look at the men that, um, I look at the men that uh, when I first, when, when, me, when we first started building Big Memphis, everybody had to align themselves. <laughs> you know, and I'm to be real with me at the time. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't playing with no damn brothers. You know, for real. If I was serious, they had to be serious. And all the brothers, the majority of the bro men, that came up under me, and I ain't talking about these newer men, by them had to sit up there and make sure that they align themselves up with the way I was. Because, look, I'm going to show y'all some. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus chapter. It's a... A wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a wise 
I mean, a government of a prudent man is well ordered. As is, as the judge of the people is, so are his officers. And what manner, I mean, what manner man, the ruler of the city is, such are they that dwell therein. So it's letting you know, like these brothers, like they knew I wasn't playing. I was tra if I traveled, they had to travel. You know what I'm saying? Look, I wasn't joking, and it wasn't no goddamn burgers, and it wasn't no burgers, and it wasn't no fringes, it wasn't no damn rap contests, it wasn't none of that. Either you gonna get these precepts down. <laughs> You look, you, you either you'll get the precepts down, you gonna bring your ass to camp every day, and we gonna do this work. If you don't wanna do this work, you can get the hell away from around me. That's serious, and that's how we roll. But now, cause now we got so many brothers. And then at first, like, I used to be able to personally deal with all these brothers. So now you handed the duty down to the different men. And I'm gonna tell you right now, some of y'all don't deserve to be officers. You know, and, and we're going to start putting things into play. Well, if we see that you ain't properly building the men up under you, if you're officer 10 and you can't build 10 men, you're going to be taken down, period. You're going you gonna to be taken down. When I, I traveled everywhere, I took brothers on the road with me for three or four months straight. Every week I had certain brothers, they was out with me doing the work every single week. You know what I'm saying? And that, you know, that's why our brothers rooted now. And brothers ain't with that fun and games, burgers and friends and stuff like some of y'all other brothers. You know, y'all always playing and goofy as hell and silly and telling jokes. Nobody don't got time for that, man. We in the truth. Y'all still y'all trying to mix the world and the truth together. It ain't gonna happen like that. So now look, let's go to Ecclesiastes 13, y'all. Ecclesiasticus chapter 13, verse 1. So I'm telling y'all, y'all better watch the company you keep. That's why I'm seeing brothers. I'm like, hold on, damn, this brother been a soldier for four years. How the hell are you still a soldier for four years? What is you doing? This brother, uh, this, this brother been a brother for four years. This brother been an officer for five years. How the hell are you still an officer for five years? All I know how. You ain't properly building men. Why this brother still a brother? Oh, he ain't properly being built up. It's the company that he keeping that's keeping him right there. The most high ain't going to move him up because he ain't changed the circle yet. Some of y'all, y'all come in, you set up these circles, you make these little clicks, but guess what end up happening? You end up stunning your growth in this truth. You stop growing. You be stuck where you at. That's why you're always being corrected. For real. Then some of y'all, even if you do say, well, you know what, let me change my circle. You align yourself with the same type of people you was aligned with at first. You just ain't with that brother no more. That's uh burgers and fringes. And when I'm saying burgers and fringes, y'all talking about these your kick it brothers. All they want to do is eat and uh wear fringes. That's it. And, and party and laugh and trip and drink. <laughs> that, that's your burgers and fringes, brother. Scriptures barely come out around these brothers. Scriptures barely come out around these brothers. I like when brothers come to me and be like, hey, could you break down, uh, uh, could, you, could you go over uh, Acts 8 with me? Could you go over 1 Corinthians 4? Hey, what does this mean right here? Look, put me to the test. Don't come around me and tell me, uh, let's grill a damn steak. <laughs> grill my own damn steak without you you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna be i'm not no burgers and fringes dude i'm all about this work you know what i'm saying hey look where you want to travel to this weekend uh i'm driving now now with these damn burger and fringes brothers you can't get them to put their car on, on the road you can't get them to travel no damn where but when they come to travel to the bike or or, tra uh, or, or go and get some drink or a, a damn domino game, or a space game, or a studio time. Oh, hell, they always got time for that. I, I don't understand that. But when it's, it's time to sit up here and say, look, let's get the hell up out of here, and let's go uh, let's go help these folks in uh, uh, St. Louis build. Let's go to Kentucky and help Kentucky build. Oh, hey, Chicago, they need reinforcement of men this weekend. How many of y'all down the ride for reinforcements? How many of y'all down to go reinforce? 
You know what I'm saying? And then, then that's when you get crickets. Now, look, let me get this real quick. Ecclesiastes 13. Uh, verse 1. I'm telling y'all, watch the company you keep. That's why some of y'all ain't growing in this truth. And you're going to be stuck where you at. Some of y'all, you're going to stay a brother. Some of y'all going to stay a soldier. And some of y'all, you, you your, your behavior is toxic to the new brothers. The new brothers, they ain't even properly built up yet. I'm telling you, they ain't even properly built up yet. They still battling worldly stuff. And then they get around your crazy ass up in this truth. And then you wonder why the new brother ain't growing. And then now you sitting up here saying, oh, yeah, brother, stay out the spirit. The brother stay out the spirit because he came in and your damn spirit rubbed off on him. Let me see. Uh, ask yourself, do you got the spirit of your elders or you got the spirit of your peers, your, your, your brother, your kick it buddy? <laughs> Who spirit you got? Do you got the spirit of your elder or do you got the spirit of your kick it buddy? All right, where we go? Ecclesiastes 13, verse 1. It says, He that touches the pit shall be defiled therewith. And he that have fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him. If you fellowship with somebody, if you keep company with somebody that's arrogant, guess what's going to happen? You going to end up being just like them. Some of y'all, you keep company with arrogant and prideful brothers. Some of you sisters, you keep company with arrogant and prideful sisters. Guess what? You're going to end up being just like this sister. And you see this person's behavior. You see the attitude, but you still align yourselves with them. You don't sit up there and say, hey, let me be separate. This brother's spirit ain't right. This sister's spirit ain't right. But guess what? Because this your friend and they allow certain stuff to go on and this your kicky buddy and burgers and fringes. As long as you get a as long as y'all got burgers and everybody wearing fringes, you good. You won't separate yourself. Let me read it again. And it says, He that touches a pit shall be defiled therewith. And he that fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him. So if you keep company. With somebody that's arrogant, you keep some company with somebody that's prideful, you're going to end up being just like them. You say, burden not thyself above thy power while thou livest, and have no fellowship with one that is mightier and richer than thyself. But how agree the kettle and the earthen pot together? But if the one be smitten against the other, it shall be broken. So, the, so look, this is what it's going into right here. Listen to it. It say, burning not thyself above thy power while thou livest. When it's saying, burning not that, put it like this, burning not yourself above your power. If you know you can't lift 500 pounds, why would you sit up here and lift 500 pounds? And then it say, um, and have no fellowship with one that is richer, mightier, and richer than thyself. It's saying basically don't keep company with people who are richer or more powerful than you. You know what I'm saying? And then it goes on to tell you why not to do that. You know what I'm saying? Look, let's keep going. It's saying, for if one be smitten against the other, it should be broken. Verse 3, the rich man have done wrong, and yet he threatened with Oh, so a rich person, he can do wrong, but he can basically add insult to injury if he want to. If he want to, he can add insult. Why? Because he got that money to be able to do it. You know what I'm saying? He, <laughs> you, he can wrong you, and then let, you can't go at him like that. If you a poor man, you ain't really going at no rich man, you know, and, and the reason why, because he got that money to be able to make things worse for you. You know what I'm saying? He, he got money to make things worse for you. They say, the poor is wrong, and he must entreat also. So when the poor is wrong, when the, when the poor is wrong, you know what I'm saying, he'll be, he'll be like forced to uh entreat or to apologize for himself you know what i'm saying now look where we at where we at let's go here let's read on 
if that be for if if that be for his profit, he used thee. But if thou have nothing, he will forsake thee. You know what I'm saying? Now, and see what it's going into. Basically, it's letting you know the company you keep. Right now, it's dealing with a rich man and a poor man. You know what I'm saying? It was like, look, basically he's saying, look, as long as you profiting the rich man, you know what I'm saying, uh, he'll have you around. But when you in need of him, he ain't believe you helpless. You know what I'm saying? You got brothers like that. As long as you doing stuff for them, this profit in them, they'll keep you around. As long as they buying the uh buying the bottles, oh yeah, they're gonna keep you around. Why? Because you buying the damn bottles. As soon as you start buying the bottles, guess what's gonna happen? As soon as you start buying the bottles, guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna stop dealing with you. Simple as that. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna start dealing with you. We in Ecclesiasticus chapter uh 13 verse 4. And you gotta watch brothers and sisters like that. Cause some people they body friends. You know what I'm saying? As soon as you stop doing what you was doing, guarantee you they'll stop coming around you. When it when they need your help, you will they'll lead you. When you uh when you need their help, they'll lead you help. Guarantee you. What we at verse five. If thou have anything, he will live with thee. Yea, he will make thee bear and will not be sorry for it. If, if he have need of thee, he will deceive thee and smile upon thee and put thee in hope. He will speak thee fair and say, What wantest thou? So let's just say he'll be with you. You got some people that'll be around you. Let me read verse five again. If thou have anything, he will live with thee. You got some people that'll be around you and they'll drain you dry. They're just around you for what you got. I'm telling you right now. They ain't around you because they trying to be built up in the spirit. Oh man, look, you got that nice car. You got that big house. That's really why they want to be around you. You can't read them. You can't show them no damn scriptures. You know what I'm saying? Watch the people that align themselves with you. They just might look to be over your house. For real. They align, they're around you for what you got. It's a... I want to start at verse 4 again. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to jump back up. I will, I will admit, if that be for his profit, he will use thee. But if thou have nothing, he will forsake thee. So some people, they have you around long is beneficial to them. And then when it's time, when it comes time for you to help them, I mean, it, when it come to around, come come around to them helping you, they they'll leave. They they won't help you. They'll leave you hanging high and dry. It say, if thou have anything, he will live with thee. Yea, he will make thee bear and will not be sorry for it. You got some people, man. They around you just for what you got. He'll be around with you as long as you doing this for them or doing that for them. And them folks, they'll suck the life out of you. Oh, okay, you supplying the bottles. They're going to always be around you because why? You just supply the bottles. For real, stop supplying them bottles. See what happens. For real. Oh, man, this dude, he always having the best food. And we don't have to never pay for it. And they'll be around you just to eat the best food. Wow, they don't never, they don't never have to pay for it. But they ain't going to never be around you <laughs> to be built up in the scriptures. Where we at? If he if he have need of thee, he will deceive thee and smile upon thee, and put thee in hope. He will speak thee fair and say, "What wantest thou?" And he will shame thee by his meats until he have drawn thee dry twice or thrice, and at the last he will laugh thee to scorn. Afterward, when he seeth thee, he will forsake thee and shake his head at thee, 
Beware that thou be not deceived and brought down in thy jollity. Some of y'all brothers, y'all simple as hell. Some of y'all simple as hell. Because you got some people, they'll use you. And they'll be around you, they'll smile at you, they'll laugh at you, and they'll use good words. You know what I'm saying? And they'll be like, hey, look, you need some? For real. But these people right here, they'll drain your ass dry. Because they ain't around you to learn them scriptures. <laughs> they ain't a lot around you to build you up. They just around you for what you got. For real, they'll use, they'll use you up. And they ain't even, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, let me tell you this. Some of these brothers, they don't even be seeing it. Some of these sisters, they don't even be seeing it. They don't even be seeing it. But notice how I say, beware that thou be not deceived and brought down in thy jollity. Now, when you look up jollity, it means simplicity. Because some of y'all, you be being simple. You think this person really, <laughs> you think this your buddy. When it's all about burgers and fringes, what you can do for them. Period. You got the bottles. <laughs> you got the uh you got the food you always got the food you always paying for the food you don't got no problem with taking brothers out but these brothers these brothers can't build you up for nothing ask them about revelation five and i mean ask them in revelation six to uh explain further further expound on the white horse and see if they can be able to do that Guarantee you they can't do it. And the only way they will be able to do it, you know what I'm saying? Hey, Barik and Ben Israel say, sounds, sadly, this sounds like some of my worldly family members. Look, that's what it is. Brothers just want to kick it. I'm telling you, it's the same. Look, remember what we open when, when uh what we open up with in this truth, y'all. Remember, we open up with first Timothy one and nine. Showing you the type of attributes brothers and sisters have on them. They are right. A lot of these folks, they still be worldly as hell. They ain't even seeing it. Their conversation ain't godly. All they want to do is drink. All they want to do is... See, me, I've been in the truth 10 years. I can have drinks. I stopped drinking with brothers like that now. Hell no. Nah, not no new brothers. I say I can't drink with them. They get out of hand. For real. Y'all gotta watch it. Some people ain't around you for uh some people around you just to kick it and around you for the things you got. For real. You can't build them up worth, worth a damn. They ain't around you to get built up. They're around you to be buddy, buddy, and friend. I come in into not to make friends, but if I make friends in the process, all praises to the most high. But you're going to go through a damn proving stage with me. And I set brothers up good and easy. I see what type of man of man you is when you first came to come in. I'm watching and see the way you act. Is you respectful or is you disrespectful? Do you always want to kick it or do you always want to study? Which one you want to do? Me, I'm proving people. Let's get, hold on. Let me, let's skip this, y'all. I mean, let's, let's leave this right here and let's go to Sirach 6 and 7. Let me say, um, if thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. Look, I'm proving the hell out of you. Do you take counsel or do you not? Yeah, I'm going to sit around. I'm going to have some drink with you. I sit around. I play dominoes with you. And I, I might even invite you to the barbecue. But I want to see what amount of brother you is. I'm proving you. Yeah, but th is this all they want to do is drink, play dominoes, and, uh, <laughs> and grill? And some brothers I be having on me because they was committed to me. I mean, I have around because they are committed. They was committed to me to special trust. Special trust is when somebody tell you, hey, you look, this is what I need you to do. I need you to look out for this brother. Take care of this brother. Make sure he's straight. 
You know what I'm saying? And that special trust right there, that means, okay, this brother around because I told another brother that's in this truth that I was going to do this for this brother. I'm going to bring this, try to bring this brother under my wing. I'm going to have him in my presence. But then some of these brothers you try to commit to your special trust, they won't change neither. They do the same damn thing. Where we at? Um, so some of y'all, I be proving y'all. You know, and you'll see one brother act a certain way, and then you think that you can sit up there and act like he act. Or you got the same type of relationship. Hell no, nah, you don't got nowhere near the relationship. You don't even know what the hell going on, first and foremost. You don't even know what's going on. Hold on, y'all. Let me see some. All right, where we at? Okay. Uh, we'll be left off it. All right, where we at? Where we at? Verse 7. And he was shamed thee by his meats. Meaning like, okay, they'll feed you. Put it like this. You embarrass yourself through the company that you keep. So y'all grilling, brother whipping it up. Now you doing all types of stupid ass stuff. <laughs> it's a finally it's a he was shamed thee by his meats until he have drawn thee dry twice or thrice meaning okay you he just sat up there you, you sat up there you are you around the wrong brothers you're around the wrong sisters and what ends up happening is you start to do things to reveal yourself. You know what I'm saying? And then people sitting up here, they tripping at you. They laughing at you. Let's read on. It say, after when he see it, he will forsake thee and shake his head at thee. Some people, they'll sit up here. I'm going to tell you, this is how I do it. I'm going to change meats to drinks. Watch these brothers that drink a lot. Watch these brothers that drink a lot. I'm telling and these sisters too. Y'all know some people be saying y'all up, don't it? You would be around a brother, you would be around a sister. The ball to come out. And they'll sit up there. They already know you got a drinking problem. First and foremost, a, a brother that love you, if he knows you got a drinking problem. He'll sit up there. He he'll be like, you know what? I ain't drinking with your ass, for real. Or he'll be watching what you drink. And then you know you have some brothers. They'll tell a brother that, but you know they they they'll watch what a brother drank too. Hey, bro, I think he drunk too much and he can stop. But then you got some brothers. They'll keep feeding you the damn drink. They'll keep feeding you the drink. They know exactly what they're doing. They're trying to get you drunk. He trying to embarrass you. That's why I say, um, and, and he was shamed by his meats. I just say the drinks. You got some brothers there get you drunk on purpose. Because they already know you ain't going to stop drinking. Y'all already know you ain't going to stop drinking. So they just send you up. Oh, yeah, okay. Dude said he also, look at him. He's getting drunk in front of the new brothers. That's why I had, that's why me, I try to align myself with certain people and I try to keep my circle small. Because I'd be damned if y'all finna get me caught up in some mess. For real. I'd be damned. I've not seen this stuff that happened the last past year ago, but I held it, man. Hell no. That means, listen to me, when you read verse 7, it's basically letting you know. You got some people out here that'll set you up. You got brothers and sisters that claim to be your brother and sister in this truth. They will set you up. Guaranteed. They will set your ass up. What we at? It's saying if he will, and he will shame thee by his meats. I'm just using drink here because a lot of brothers love to drink. It's a, 
He'll give Bailey. He'll give you drink until you embarrass yourself and get to doing stupid stuff. It's saying until he have drawn thee dry twice or thrice. <laughs> hey, you know, hey, that's funny right there. Cause it said until he have drawn you dry twice. So you basically, basically, after he didn't drain you two or three times. After, after he and me show who you was two or three times, it say, and at the last, he would laugh thee to scorn. Then, then he'll laugh at you. Oh, nigga, you was passed out drunk on the couch, nigga. <laughs> now, look, listen to this. It say, afterward, when he see it thee, he will forsake thee and shake his head at thee. And then, look, when he see you later on, when he see you later on, he he gonna pretend that hey, nothing really, it, nothing didn't happen, and he wasn't the reason for it. He set you up the whole time. You were set up. Why? Because you y'all know why. Some of y'all simple as hell. That's why the scriptures say, "Beware that thou be not deceived and brought down in thy jollity." Because some of y'all, you simple as hell. You want to be all around brothers jolly and shit all the time. You always want to have fun. Man, get that fun shit away from me, for real. Yeah, I'm trying to get the kingdom around this joint. Brothers will stop you from getting the kingdom. Because everybody, everybody like to have fun, y'all. Everybody like to trip. Everybody like a good laugh. I love to barbecue and grill. Hell, I be grilling every day for this feast on living bread. I like to pop bottles and drink. And I like to study too. <laughs> I like to go over scriptures. I like people to challenge my understanding. Because if I don't know some, you know what's gonna end up happening. If I don't know some, brother, ask me something I don't know. We've been to sit up here, we've been to figure this thing out together. Right then and there. Put me to the test. If I'm a captain of a thousand, then sit up there and prove that I'm a prove me it. <laughs> prove to see why I'm a captain of a thousand. Now, some of y'all think we we just get our rank because we around the leadership. Or so. I don't know why the hell you think we get the rank. I don't know. Where we at? Verse 9. If thou be invited of a mighty man, withdraw thyself. And so much the more will he invite thee. It's saying, press thou not upon him, lest thou be put back. Stand not far off. Let's not be begotten. So remember, y'all, at first it was dealing with a rich man. Now it's dealing with a poor man. But, you know, I'm I'm throwing us, you know, I'm trying to mix Israel well in this thing the best way I can. Because it's basically still dealing with uh, 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 it's, it's still basically dealing with the company you keep and, and how you're supposed to behave yourself in the midst of this company i um basically didn't basically it's going over who to align yourselves with and who not to align yourselves with and if you are around certain people the way you know you know what i'm saying the way you're supposed to act and or, or showing you too that you got some people around you they ain't looking out for your way of being they just around you because you the kicky brother you, you hey you funny <laughs> you tell jokes now look let's read this verse nine if thou be invited of a mighty man withdraw thyself now when it's dealing with a mighty man <coughs> it's talking about somebody that's influential too it's a and so much the more he will invite thee when it's talking about withdraw thyself meaning it's saying be reserved in your behavior watch the way you behave around them withdraw yourself from foolishness don't be ignorant when you're around these so-called mighty men because you have people be like hey i'm the mighty they'll be like hey you the mighty captain whole shy but then you'll come around me acting a damn fool a damn nut <laughs> and I'm looking at you, I'm like, man, this brother gotta be crazy as hell. And some of y'all, you think you could do that because 
you will see me and Deacon Abigail tripping, or you will see me and another brother tripping. We got their relationship like that. I really don't got their relationship with you. I don't know your ass. But instead of you withdrawing yourself and watching your behavior, you do the exact opposite, some of y'all. It's a, if thou be invited of a mighty man, withdraw thyself. That means, and draw yourself from foolishness. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that, you know, uh, you on your best behavior. When you're dealing with somebody influential or somebody that's mightier than you. And so much the more he will invite thee. And then guess what? Then he, if you know how to be reserved in your behavior, they'll invite you more often. You know what I'm saying? They'll keep asking you, um, you know, to, to come around. That's why some of y'all, you was able to get into certain circles because you knew how to behave yourself. Then, do it mean running up on the mighty man? Now, I am leaving running up on the mighty man. It's just saying, like, if you invited to, like, a dinner or invited to the house of a mighty man, let's just say if Bishop Nathaniel wants to invite you to his house. When it's saying withdraw thyself, it's saying basically be, you know what I'm saying, withdraw yourself from foolishness. Make sure you're on your best behavior. See, he ain't telling you leave away from around him because verse, uh, the next verse say, and so much the more will he invite you. It say he gonna keep inviting you. So it's saying basically make sure that you withdraw yourself from foolish. Withdraw yourself from foolishness. Don't be around influential people. Don't be around people that's mightier than you doing stupid stuff. That's why y'all be wondering why brothers be losing their reign. You all up in, you all around captains and deacons doing stupid stuff. And then you wonder why a brother brother all of a sudden. <laughs> you wonder why this brother brother all of a sudden. He a brother because he doing stupid stuff. That woman. Um, verse nine. So I hope uh, they helped you out right there. All right, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Uh, verse ten. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? It say, press thou not upon him, lest thou be put back. Stand not far off, lest thou be forgot. So basically, then you know, hey, look, hey, it's saying, press thou not upon him. You know what I'm saying? Don't push too hard when you go around him. It say, lest thou be put back. Because some of y'all, you'll be around brothers and you, you. Let me see. I'm trying to see how this explain. You push too hard. You press too hard, and then a brother had to put you in your place. Put it like that, <laughs> for real. Some of y'all, you get around a brother, you push too hard. Then now you got to be put in your place. That's why I say, pressing down not upon him, let's not be put back. Now he got to put you in your place. Because the way the way you uh the the way you start to behave, then it say, stand not far off, lest thou be forgot. Meaning, okay, cause see this and and this goes right back to the withdrawing thyself. Cause some of y'all, I heard brothers break this down before. And they really think this stuff about, no, don't be around no mighty man at all. Don't be around influential people. The scriptures say, cleave to him that is wise. What the hell? <laughs> They're just like saying that Christ was walking the earth. Don't uh, don't be around Christ. But we're saying, oh, hey, you ain't going to be around Christ after no damn fool. You know what I'm saying? It's a certain way you got to act and behave when you're around people who more mightier than you. It's a certain way you got to behave when you're around people that's real influential. 
I had to separate myself from brothers, but I'd be like, I'd be down if I'm gonna let brothers bring me down by the way they act. Like, hell no, or have me act in a certain type of way. So I had to sit up there and say, no, let me let me push back. You know what I'm saying? But it said, now look, it says stand, you know, because I had to put brothers in their place and let them know, hey, look, this out of order. Look, you can't be doing that, bro. You can't move like that. What's wrong with you? But now, since I put you in the place, listen, it say stand not far off. Let's not be forgot. That means separate yourself completely. You know what I'm saying? That means, look, don't get out of line. Don't get out of line when you're around somebody that's more mightier than you. Make sure you stay, keep stay in the spirit. For real. Y'all got to watch the company you keep. You got some people, they'll get around you. And, and I'm going to tell you too. See, when y'all think about this mightier than you stuff too, y'all be like some, and, and, and you can use it in that context where somebody stronger than you. Because somebody will beat your ass. For real, watch them fighting brothers. <laughs> Well, I know I got some fighting brothers online right now. I know they might think, man, he, he talking about me. No, I ain't talking about you. I knew brothers. I'm telling you, I knew brothers way before you. That's what made me think. I knew brothers way before some of y'all fighting brothers that uh, used to always want to get into some. You know what I'm saying? I had one brother. He sat up there. He went and boxed up his sister boyfriend and then came back and showed me the video. It was fun as hell. And then he said he didn't want to do it. But I said, bro, you smiled before you did it. This dude, this dude, turn, you know how you turn, look at the camera. This dude did a big smile and smirk and just leaned into the dude. I'm like, come on, bro. <laughs> you know, where is real. You got to watch them brawling brothers, man. I'll tell you. All right, where we at? And say, if thou be invited of a mighty man, withdraw thyself. Meaning, withdraw yourself from foolishness. Yeah, don't be around Bishop Nathaniel cracking jokes and being goofy as hell, that's what you're going to be known for. You're going to be, we're going to call you the comedian. And say, and so much the more he will invite you. If you know how to behave yourself, if you move with wisdom, and you in the spirit, they're going to sit up there and keep inviting you. But see, some of y'all, you burger and fringes, brothers, you don't want to be around nobody that's mightier than you. You want to be around people that's equal to you, so you can talk shit to them and stuff like that. Because you know if you're around somebody mighty than you, it's a press not upon him. You know, like, look, man, don't let me do, let me not push this dude uh, too far. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't let me play with this man too much. It's a press down not upon him, lest I be put back. Then you know, you know, like, look, man, if I do that, this dude going to put me in my place. You know what I'm saying? You know your rank could get took. Like, I done had mercy on plenty of brothers, man. Some of y'all know y'all rank's supposed to be gone. Right now. Let me see. It says, stand not far off, lest thou be forgotten. And then even if a brother do put, your, put you in your place, the scripture's saying, look, okay, but don't stand too far off. You know what I'm saying? You still want to be aligned with who? The ones that's influential, the ones that are mightier than you. Why? Because you can learn from them. You know what I'm saying? For real. Yeah, they work mightier than yours right now. But you're trying to do what? You're trying to push to be there. And the only way to push to be there, you need to be around those people to learn from them. To see how they got there. And to see what they motivation. And how they can motivate you. For real, ain't known by the company you keep as well as the company you separate from. Right. Right. That's why I be telling people, like, it, it ain't hard to see who I'm aligned with. <laughs> I mean, just go on Facebook and look at look at the videos, look at the pictures, look at the travels. You see who I try to align myself with, who I try to be around. And I know what to do and I know what not to do. I done got put in my place before. But when I got put in my place, what I do, I fix my shit. I didn't stand too far off because I don't want to be forgotten. You know, I'm telling y'all, y'all got to be careful, man. For real. I, I'm, I'm going to say use wisdom. Use wisdom. Where we at, y'all? Verse 11. 
Now listen to this. It says, affect not to be made equal unto him in talk. Oh, man. Oh, man. Damn. Listen to this. It say affect not to be made equal unto him in talk and believe not his many words. For with much communication he tempt thee and smiling upon thee will get out thy secrets. Oh, man, look. Hey, and this always happens. Hey, this always happens, man. Look, brothers get, I'm telling y'all, y'all, uh, look. See, hey, I, now I'm getting y'all. First, we was dealing with somebody rich. Now we dealing with somebody mighty. You know what I'm saying? It say now. Listen to this. It say, affect not to be made equal to him and talk. Cause some of y'all, man, look, you go around, sir, brothers and sisters, you people that's mighty than you, or been in the truth long to you, and you try to make yourself equal. Until them in conversation. It say, look, affect not to be made equal to him and talk. So it's like, look, don't be pretending to be his equal. Let's read on. And believe not his many words. And it say, it don't trust everything somebody says. Because look, listen to this. For with much communication will he tempt thee. And smiling upon thee will get out thy secrets. Why? Because in spite uh, even though y'all have an, uh, a good long conversation leading and communicating a lot, you know what I'm saying? Some people just testing you. They just testing you. They trying to see what you're going to say. They trying to see if you're going to bring out your sin. Oh, man, brothers, no, I'm good for this. <laughs> I will sit down there and let you talk and reveal yourself. But I'm telling y'all the truth. You got some people sit around here and let you talk and reveal yourself. Bishop Nathan, he good to do that one right there. You sit around, let you just talk yourself all into all types of stuff. Then next thing you know, hey, now you and confessed it to fornication. <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> For real. Hey, I done seen it happen. I done seen it happen. For real. It's showing you how to behave when you're around somebody. Why? Because you tried to make yourself they equal. Yeah, they had a conversation with you, and yeah, they'll bring out some stuff. And then next thing you know, bam, you bring out some stuff. Oh, when, when this happened? A week ago. Bro, a week ago? Man, you wicked as hell. <laughs> man, you wicked as hell. So then you know, man, y'all, y'all brothers, y'all gotta learn how to know how to deal with people that's mightier than you, that's influential than you. That's why a lot of y'all try to avoid. You try to avoid this right here. You you avoid the mighty and you go for the Bergen fringes. You just want to be around. Um, you just want to be around brothers and sisters. That's that's fun. Because you know, you you know that, hey, look, no, I don't want to be around Cap. Cap might correct me. I don't want to be around the other Cap, but he might correct me. I don't want to be around that officer. He might correct me. It ain't the point that y'all really don't got nothing in common. Because I know the scripture say a man will cleave to his light. And that's on down, I think. But still, though. You should want to be around people mightier than you, but what you got to ask yourself, what did you going around them for? You can't go around somebody that's influential or uh, somebody that's mightier than you with no damn burgers and fridge spirit. They're going to be looking at you crazy as hell. They're going to be around you crazy as hell because while you're around them burgers and fridges, brothers, they trying to set your ass clean up. Oh, yeah, they trying to get you drunk. Yeah, I'm give him another drink. Some of them trying to set you up. But now nah, you ain't seeing it though. Because you all jolly. <laughs> you all jolly. You all you you in the midst of your simplicity. For real. 
You're supposed to want to be around people that's going to build you up. Go around, ask questions. I remember when, um, man, you know, I, I can say this for sure, man. I, you know, I thank the most high for being able to even put me in the presence of leadership, to even sit around at the table and ask questions and to hear deep breakdowns to be built up in the understanding. And, and that was through the works I put in and not never trying to make myself equal with the men that's over me. Some of y'all, you try to make yourself equal with the men that's over you and you fail every time. Then you get put in your place. They'll sit around, you'll sit around, we'll come and say with you, with you and let you talk yourself right into a storm. <laughs> Verse 12. But cruelly he will lay, it said, but cruelly he will lay up thy words and will not spur to do thee hurt and put thee in prison. You see that? So while you sitting around being on, where we at, where we at, where we at? Uh, so while you sitting around and you trying to make yourself equal to Somebody that's mightier than you thinking y'all buddy buddy and shit too. Now, this is what happened with some of y'all. You get think you buddy buddy and you end up some of y'all I ain't gonna say you 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 talk yourself into trouble that you know you can't get out. You know what I'm saying? It say, but he will cruelly lay up thy words and will not spread to duty hurt and put thee in prison. I will be at verse 13. Observe and take good heed, for thou walkest in peril of thy overthrowing. When thou hearest these things, awake in thy sleep. So the scriptures say, look, you're supposed to observe. Just let you know too, keep your secrets to yourself, be careful. For you are always walking on dangerous ground, you know. And that's when they say walkers in peril. Talking about danger, walking in the midst of danger. You know what I'm saying? Uh, overthrowing. When when thou hearest these things, awake out of the sleep. So then you know, man, look, be careful. For real. Because you got, and, and look, I use leadership for some of this. But being somebody mightier than you, there can be anybody. Not just leadership. Leadership is looking out for your well-being. But you got some brothers and sisters, they ain't. You're telling them your secrets. And what they do, they reveal your damn secrets. You tell them, look, I'm dealing with this. I'm battling that. You know what I'm saying? They let you talk yourself up into a storm. You know? That's why you got, I'm telling you, be careful of who you keep your company with. Why you think a lot of people business be getting out there? Uh, I mean, why you think some people business be getting out there now? Because they kept the wrong company. They talked to the wrong person. So y'all be careful. I just use leadership in this example, meaning how some of y'all, how some of you brothers come around and try to make yourself equal to your leaders when you shouldn't even be doing that. You need to watch how you behave around your leaders. And then that, that way you won't have to worry about being uh, put to shame. You know what I'm saying? And then it's the same with dealing with other brothers and sisters that's more mighty or more influential with you. This ain't even just in the truth. You, you shouldn't go around no mayor acting a certain way. You shouldn't go around no congressman acting a certain way. You shouldn't even go around a judge. These laws, remember the scripture saying and uh Luke 4 and 4, man shouldn't live by bread alone, but by every word of God. It's going to come time where you got to apply this everywhere you go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you ain't going to go around no goddamn, you ain't going to go around Deontay Wilder behaving a certain way. You know he might knock your ass out. You know what I'm saying? For real. All right, y'all, I think I'm going to wrap it up. With this right here, I'm going to read one more scripture. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 9 and 9. 9 and 9. So it ain't saying. Mm, 
Not nine and nine. Hold on, hold on. Nine and fifteen. It's a Ah, right, here we go. It say, let thy talk be with the wise, and all thy com communication in the law of the Most High. You see that? That's who align yourself with people whose communication is in the laws of the Most High. Y'all get together. All y'all doing is going over scriptures, talking about scriptures, and trying to break scriptures down. Not just trying to kick it. For real. That's why a lot of y'all... That's why some of you brothers, y'all can't never fix y'all issues and your problem. Because you always around somebody that's kicking it. And, and yeah, that's it. They ain't showing you. Yeah, they got issues. They got the same issues and problems you got. And I know y'all be like, well, you everybody got issues and problems. Yes, they do. But some people are more experienced than dealing with their issues. Some people are more experienced with dealing with problems and they can help you get through it because just because they having issues and problems right now that means they having the same ones you have they could already and uh, they overcame they, they probably overcame the stuff you going through but the, the the ones you're dealing with now the burgers and fringes brothers and sisters yeah they they <laughs> all y'all none of y'all ain't sitting up there growing None of y'all ain't growing. None of y'all ain't passing y'all trials. Burger Friends brother got a trial. Burger Friends sister got a trial going on. The same goddamn trial. Same trial for years. Damn, y'all still, you, you still ain't overcame that yet? Oh, I know why you ain't can't overcame that. Look who you're around. It is stunt your growth. Because you know if you're around the wise men, the wise men gonna flat out, they're gonna tell you the truth. The wise men gonna always be, hey, how this situation going, bro? Sister, how this situation going? Are you still dealing with that yet? Oh, this is what you need to do. No, oh, you go around the burger friends, brother. Y'all kick it, laugh, drink, and y'all try to forget your problems and your issues. Guess what? That's the stuff we used to do in the world. Remember in the world, we used to buy a blunt to get high to try to forget the problem and the issue instead of tackling it. Instead of dealing with it, the, the Burger Friends brother ain't going to give you no damn counsel. The Burger Friends sister ain't going to give you no counsel. All they want to do is eat your meat, drink your drink, and uh, <laughs> laugh and have fun. That's it. The elder men, no, it ain't going down like that. They're going to get on your ass. And they're going to let you know, hey, look, get it together. Oh, you still dealing with that? Oh, come on. And some of y'all, you, you can't really take them real admonishing because you get upset. So let's read this again. Ecclesiastes 9 and 15. Let thy talk be with the wise and all thy communication and the law of the most high. Let's go from here there to uh, Ephesians 4 and 28. So y'all got to watch it. Man, we got to watch the company we keep, period. Let me see some. And you got to know how to behave when you in the presence of certain people. Now, some people, they just be trying to get you to reveal yourself. Some people, it is actually there to help build you up. You know what I'm saying? But you got to align yourself with the right people. That's why some of you brothers and sisters ain't growing. Ephesians 4 and 28. Or you, or and just like I said, or you'll sit up there when you realize that a brother or sister don't got your best interest. A lot of y'all, you, you'll separate from it. But then what? You go get around the same type of people you were just around. That's why you ain't growing in this truth. And then you wonder why you see other brothers keep growing. Other brothers keep growing. I remember one, I remember we had a brother in the congregation going to say, tell a brother he bought his rank. <laughs> and this brother, he never, he don't align himself with leadership. You know what I'm saying? He, he always with the burgers and fringes, brothers. You let me tell it. <laughs> but he never aligned himself with leadership. He never traveling. He ain't never nothing. Meanwhile, the other brother, he traveling. 
He around the leadership. You know what I'm saying? He, he tried his best to put in the bricks. People get, you know what I'm saying? Uh, brothers getting to know him. Yeah, nobody don't know you. <laughs> you burger and French. Drink, burgers, chips, hot dogs. <laughs> and, uh, and laughter. That's it. For real, a brother ain't never came up to me and asked me to break down a damn thing. Hey, Cap, can you explain this? And then got the nerve to say somebody and bought, bought their rank. I'm telling you, this type of stuff we deal with, y'all. Look who you aligned with. You aligned with the Bergen fringes. That's it. That's what y'all do. Look, look, look who you around all the time. Y'all eat. Y'all drink, and, 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 and y'all, you know what I want to say. <laughs> y'all stanking up each other bathrooms. <laughs> All right, where we at? All right, Ephesians 4 and um, 29. It say, let no corrupt communication proceed out of thy mouth, but that which is good to the use of edify, that he may minister grace unto the hearers. You got to ask yourself, is y'all... Really edifying one another. I know I said that was it, y'all, but I had thought about this. It's saying, to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Are y'all brothers edifying? It's, it's the crowd you around, the company you keeping. Is you being edified in that company? Hmm? Is you being edified with the company you keeping? Ask yourself. Just sit back. And really think and be like, oh no, man, I love sister so and so. I love brother such and such. But what the hell did I learn this week? Nothing. <laughs> Meanwhile, you, you got some brothers and sisters, they and they align themselves with the proper people. And and and, and look, and, and that's for y'all too. Think about everybody think about who you align with. And then you ask yourself what you learn. Ask yourself, are you being built up or is your growth or have your growth in this truth been has been stunted? Ask yourself, is the things that you heard that is edifying and ministering grace unto you? It was something else I was just going to get. I forgot it. It's just slipped my mind. Mm. Oh, yeah, Psalms 133. Then I'm gonna wrap it up, y'all. Psalms 133. Now listen to this. It say, cause see, when you deal with Psalms 133, Psalm 133, I don't know why do people translate Psalms 133 to burgers and fringes? I really don't understand it. Oh yeah, brother, we Psalms 133. I ain't doing nothing but eat burgers and fringes. For real, what is y'all? What, what have y'all went over? Explain Romans four. <laughs> do you can you do you know the breakdown of Romans four? What about Romans five? Romans seven is a hard chapter. Can you sit up here? Can you explain Romans seven? Oh man, it's it's some deep stuff in Galatians. Who is this? Who who is um? Who is this? Who is uh, Herod the king in Acts in the 12? Is this Herod the king, Acts 12, the same Herod in Matthew 4? Is they the same Herod? Oh, okay. Well, if so, name, name the Herod that's in Matthew 4. And named the Herodian king that's in Acts 12. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Is you being edified? Is you being built up? Or is you just eat burgers and fringes, kicking it and chilling? Brother can't counsel you through your problems worth a damn thing because he ain't really been through nothing. He can't even get through the little stuff that he been in. That he ain't been in the truth number three years. <laughs> he ain't been through a damn thing.
Oh, yeah, Psalm 133. It says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brother to dwell together in unity. It's like a precious ointment, meaning... Hold on, hold on, let me keep going. Upon the head that ran down the bird, even Aaron's beard. Remember this anointed oil that ran down uh, Aaron's beard. Remember this oil, it was only one person that can make this oil. That's how it's supposed to be like when, when brothers dwelling together in unity. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just going into burgers and friends. It's saying that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mounts of Zion, but there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. When brothers dwell together in unity, the scripture saying it can be a blessing. It ain't talking about I can go to my brother's house and eat burgers and, and wear fringes and, and, and drink drinks and kick the same stuff that y'all be kicking in the truth. So, real Psalm 33. It's about brothers coming together, sitting down, this uh, discussing the truth, scriptures, speaking about their faults, and being able to exhort and correct one another, being able to build one another, being able to motivate one another, not just eat a damn burger and, and wear your fringes. That ain't real Psalms 133. That's kicking. Exhorting one another. Being in one another in the spirit of Christ. Being able to correct one another without it being a problem. Man, I heard some stuff this week, man. I ain't never heard in, uh, since I've been in the truth. A brother said he was offended about something. A brother said, F, that you offended. The hell? But see, that's y'all burgers and fringes, brothers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh, man, what I think about it, it's funny as hell. Ooh, it's funny. Look, y'all got to wrap it up with that, but this was real Psalms 133 about. That's what real Psalms 133 about. So, look, y'all, y'all watch the company, y'all keep. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to keep getting up. Y'all, brothers and sisters, man, y'all make sure y'all stay in the spirit. <laughs> hey, bro, don't eat no burger doing Passover, Puerto Rican. Don't eat no burger. No living. Y'all make sure. And then, look, hold on. Let me get that real quick. First Corinthians 5. A lot of y'all think Passover just about eating lamb. Yeah, we grilling lamb every day. Hell. <laughs> yeah, all praises y'all grilling lamb every day. Is you being built up, though? Or, or is you becoming a nigga? Let's get first from Corinthians 5. So y'all can understand what the Passover is really about. Some of y'all brothers, y'all coming to the truth, man. Y'all be in the spirit. Y'all be going hard. Then you align yourself with the wrong people. The wrong people. And then your growth just stops. Like, man, the brother ain't growing no more. Brother's still been here, well, yeah, for two years now. Okay, look, this is 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7. Listen to this. Now, I'm going to start at 6. Your glory is not good. Your burger friends is, is not good. <laughs> All right, y'all will leave y'all alone. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it say your glory is not good, knowing you not that a little limit limit the whole lump. <laughs> and your glory friends just ain't good. Your burger and friends just ain't good, man. That a little limit living the whole lump. It say, purge out there for the old living, and you may be a new lump. The old living is talking about sin, y'all. Some of you brothers, man, y'all need to be able to sit back and examine yourselves and look. Look at the circles that you align with. Ask yourself, man, hold on. Is these, is, is these brothers I'm around, is they building me up? 
or we just eating good and drinking together. Hold on, is they breaking down 1 Corinthians 4? Some of y'all don't understand 1 Corinthians 4. For real. Is they breaking down, can you explain 1 Corinthians 3, 5 through uh, 16? Man, you can't explain 1 Corinthians 3, 5 through 16. Is they giving me proper counsel? Some of these brothers ain't been through a damn thing in this truth. The scriptures say, hold on, y'all. Hey, I know I said I was going to finish, but hold on. Hell no. Go to Romans 5. These brothers ain't been through no real trials. And then, matter of fact, I'm going to tell you this. Okay, they going through trials, but they ain't overcame not one yet. You can't overcome your one trial. You ain't overcame the trial since you've been in the truth. You still fighting and dealing with the same damn stuff. Meanwhile, you had brothers, man, they had trial after trial after trial that then overcame. No, I ain't, I don't want to go get counsel from him. I want to counsel with the burger fringes. I want to talk with them and eat burgers and, and, and wear fringes. Yeah, my fringe game tight. And this burger good in the mud. <laughs> hey, I don't know. Hey, I, hey, I should have just changed the name of the classes. The burger fringe. All right, y'all, look, let me hear you for finish. But our kids get up. Okay, Romans 5. And three, he said, not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations work in patience. They can't even overcome one trial. They don't even know how to be patient. Patience, experience, they don't got no experience. And experience, hope, and they got little faith. Because you can tell through somebody's actions where they faith in. He's saying, and hope making not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the hope, Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. It's telling you how a man is built up in the spirit. It's telling you when they go through trials, they learn to be more patient. When they become more patient, they become, they gain experience. When they gain experience, they become more faithful. Brother, can't, uh, brother ain't overcame one trial yet. How the hell? They got these attributes. All right, hold on, y'all. First Corinthians 5 and 7. It's saying, uh, a verse 6. Your glorying is not good, nor ye not that a little living live in the whole lump. Purge out therefore the old living, that ye may be a new lump. The scriptures say, hey, look, and that's what you're supposed to be doing in Passover. I know a lot of y'all, you got the living up out of your houses and things like that trust me it's a crumb somewhere in your house listen to me y'all it's it's some crumbs somewhere in your house it's it's crumbs somewhere in your car it's something that you it's some living that you don't forget but the scriptures ain't talking literally talking about that right there you getting the damn crumbs out of your from from out of the pocket of the couch. I know we back on everything and clean everything. Let's see what it's talking about. Let's keep going. Purge out therefore the old living, that you may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Now, notice how I said you supposed to be unleavened. You supposed to purge out the living and be unleavened. Verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old living, neither with the living of malice and wickedness. That's the living you need to be trying to get rid of. Y'all don't see malicious brothers around you. You don't see them malicious sisters around you. You don't see brothers working wickedness around you. The scripture is saying, look, you know what? Get rid of that living right there. Become a new law. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity, and truth. So you supposed to be trying to purge their living out of you. I know you like, oh yeah, I don't got no living in my house. But here you got plenty of living up in you. Plenty. All right, y'all. Let me get up off this chair. I'm through. Somebody said don't go over here. Uh, let me see some. Being friends, it's just the people that like to kick it at Eden. 
drink all the damn time. Domino, Spade Games. Uh, basically, ain't going over no scriptures. You know, they think that Psalms one. For some reason, they was taught that there was Psalms one thirty three. As you hear brothers say, you see brothers come and see this. This where the confusion come in. That brothers will make a video or be live online on Facebook. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, man, you know, kicking it with the brother, Psalms 133. They ain't understanding. They don't see what's going on in the background. Yeah, and them brothers, they have drinks and stuff like that, too. But they ain't seeing that brothers gathered around in a circle and they going over scriptures. I, I know I was just talking to somebody. Uh, it was the day Deacon had made a video. And me and him was going back and forth with each other. You know, we were just tripping about, you know, we always having the real war. But brother said, man, they had just sat down and they went over some. I forgot that Deacon had brought out that was deep. All some of y'all saw was the back and forth, us, you know, and them grilling. And y'all was out burning yourself. <laughs> but y'all didn't see, you know what I'm saying, them brothers sit down and actually really go over the scriptures and stuff like that. You know? A watch who you align yourselves with in this truth, man. For real. You know, watch the company you keep. All right, y'all. With that, I'm going to say shalom, most high Christ bless. Hey, uh, I want to give double honors to the bishop, Elder Nathaniel. I want to give honors to the deacons, the officers, the soldiers, uh, all you brothers. I mean, the captains, the deacons, the captains, the soldiers. Officers, all you brothers and sisters that's here pushing this truth to the end of the earth, and hey, y'all stay strong, and hey, y'all brothers and sisters stay in the spirit. I know some of y'all on lockdown right now. Hell, I'm on lockdown. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We on lockdown. Y'all just know, y'all, hey, it's going to get worse than this. Right now, this is just a test test run. This is just a trial. All right, we ain't going to say the trial. This is just a test run right now. There's no one day. It's going to get worse than this because I know this lockdown, they say you can go to the grocery store. Like, I know some of y'all ain't locked down, but we locked down and they said we can go to the grocery store. They said uh, basically anything that you need, essential needs, you can go do that. So you still got people out and about. Hell, I seen, man, look, I went I, in the hood. Look, they say you can go to the gas station, right? In the hood, everybody pokes it up at the gas station. It's crazy as hell. So just know it's going to end up getting worse. You know, what they're going to start doing is they're going to start, they, you know, they already said they're going to start uh, finding people and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? That's what they said they're going to start doing if they catch you out. So, you know, y'all just be y'all just be careful. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, the different cities you in. And with that, I'm going to say shalom. Most high Christ bless.